So today I'm going to be uh, explaining functions. Um, so the main layout of what a function is, is, I've written it right here on the top. So basically what this says is that a function is something that takes an input and it sort of like munches on that input, does something to that input to give us an output. So a ex common example of the function which most uh, uh, math books use is f of x. So function is something that relates sets of things. And the set could be literally anything. It could be names of people, objects, places you've been to. It could be literally anything. A function just relates to sets. So the math textbook form of sets is actually like in diagrammatic form, it would be this. So a bunch of random numbers or not random elements. And in the math notation, they are put uh, in curly brackets and each element is listed and a comma is put in between the elements. So this is a set of the math numbers uh, from one up till five. And this is a set of the first five alphabets. Now, there are also different types of sets. Okay, and of the many types, uh, I'm gonna be elaborating on two specific, which is a finite and infinite. So a finite uh, set uh, would include like something which you know the amount of or the number of, so that would be letters, let's say the alphabets. So 23 letters in this set is a finite set, A up to Z. And a common way to write this would include, include so uh, the three dots, uh, the ellipses, is usually put in a set when you don't want to write all the elements, but you mean to include all of them. So from A to Z, and I didn't really want to write everything in, so I just put the ellipses. And um, for the infinite set, we know this could go on and on forever. This is a set of integers, and it could just go on to infinity. So that's why it doesn't really have an end. That's why we have ellipses on both sides. So a set is just a collection of things and function relates one set to another. But it does this in three different ways. And the, each way is unique and different on its own. And some are like really interesting and others are not so much. So the first one is injective. And I'm gonna put the diagram and the uh, definition in front of you. So the first one is injective. If a function output came from a unique input, it is described as injective. So you can see we have used three unique inputs to give us exactly three unique outputs. And this one, you can see it was left behind. This one wasn't actually an output. So it's actually relating the two sets not really that interesting, but it is relating it in some way. Now, if we move on to surjective. Okay, so um, let me show you the diagram first and then the definition. Okay, so this is surjective. So uh, in the surjective relationship, uh, each uh, input can be mapped onto at least one output. It doesn't matter that two inputs have the same output, but at least it is mapped onto one output. So again, if you um, read the definition, if every output can be mapped onto at least one input, it is described as surjective. Bijective, on the other hand, is what is actually a really interesting logical uh, relationship. So each, for each input, we have one output and 
for each for this set we take up the whole of this set so that's pretty interesting i feel so yeah so these are the three types of relationships uh that are uh these are the three types of relationships in math okay so now i think i just like further emphasize on the point that a function relates one set to another but exactly how does it do that so it would really help if we name these sets so the set that is put into the function is named as the input so yeah we're putting it inside right and the set that comes out of the function that is the result of the function doing something to the input is the output and a function is something that takes each value from an input set and relates it or maps it to a value in an output set so if for example we had um a relationship in which for one we had a 2 b 3 c 4 d it would be really helpful uh, and i mean that that would be that that would show that this is a function right so the input set is now like even in factories we have inputs and outputs right but to get really specific to math to sets uh that would be the a domain and range so the input set is called the domain and the output set is called the range and why so like why would we use why would we name the input as domain and the output as range because i don't just want to learn this i want to know why it's named this way so before i tell you the why uh this is uh, uh i'm just going to like give you this tip uh usually in the uh, exams uh you have a table so the input is always on one row output on the other row and the function is usually written as a rule on the top right and when i elaborate on this uh but let's get back to this first so first of all i want to uh i want you guys to keep uh the english definition of domain in the in your mind so a domain is an area of territory ruled by someone and if it's ruled by someone we know it's important right so a domain is a place important like really layman term i'm just trying to give a brief idea of what a domain is so it's some somewhere important range is an area where you can do something so a workplace right uh we also call range uh we also call that area in range where the soldiers shoot their targets and stuff but it's a workplace so again a domain is mapped onto a range right so important people go to their workplace to do something and a domain is always mapped onto the range so if you remember this if you remember the main uh meanings of the words and even i mean the word domain sounds dominant so like it kind of sounds the same as dominant so a dominant person would be mapped onto a weaker one so domain is always mapped onto a range and range is never mapped onto the domain okay uh so now functions are really helpful in math but there we have a limitation to everything and i'm going to introduce to the introduce you to the second rule which is actually the limitation so uh if you look at this you can see that uh you can see this line graph right so now i have two lines here the green line and the blue line so the green line is kind of this squiggly and this blue line is a straight diagonal line so how can we confirm that this is 
uh, function. So also I want you to remember that functions can always be graphed, can always be put onto a graph um, because if um, further on in this, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can graph them. But in my second video, I, uh, the video after this, I'm going to do work examples. So in that, you can actually see how I graph these. But for now, remember that functions can be graphed. So this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And we have a vertical line test to see if, the function, if this graph is of a function or not. So you can imagine moving the y-axis you don't have a scale, but I'm gonna use a scale. So imagine this is my y-axis, okay? I'm gonna move it around, okay? So this is like a scanner, sort of. So I'm gonna do my test, okay? So over here, uh, so let's do the test for the blue line first. So as I'm passing it across the blue line, you can see that it only ever touches the line at one point. Over here, it's touching at this point. Over here, it touches at this point, right? So it's only ever touching it at one point. If we then uh, further concentrate on the green line, uh, as I'm passing it, it is touching at one point. So up till here, we're good. Over here, two points. Over here, three points. And so we know this is not a function. So for this, the vertical line test was not cleared, but this was. So this is a function. This is a function, and this is not. Okay. So I want to show you more graphs. So this 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 graph could be of a function uh, that is a quadratic function, right? So again, the vertical line test, it's only ever touching the line at one point, right? And if you look at this graph, it's also only ever touching the line at one point. And for the circle, it is touching the line, the graph at one point, but over here it's two. Two all the way, then one. That's not okay. So that's, so this is, this is not a function. So this is not a function. But these two are functions. Okay, so now, now that you know how to uh, recognize a function graph, I'm just gonna elaborate that and, and I want you to see what it means for something to be a function or not in mathematical working, in mathematical form. So um, let's say that uh, I'm gonna do this example first and this one, okay? because this has a square, this is kind of simple. So I'm just going to take um, a paper to do this, because we have space there, okay? Uh, so let's write, rewrite the question. So rewriting the question, my function is y equal to two x minus three, okay? And I'm going to draw this table for the x and y values. So my x is one, two, three, uh, okay. I'm so sorry, this table is not that neat. But okay, let me do it. Um, so I'm gonna do for the x equals to one first. So I'm gonna rewrite the function y equals 2x minus 3 okay so x equals to 1 so we're going to replace the x by 1 so y equals to 2 1 we insert the 1 
and 2 minus 3 y equals 2 minus 1, right? So we fill in the table and we do the same thing for x equals to 2. So we rewrite the equation y equals 2x minus 3. Y equals to 2. Insert the 2 in the x place because x equals to 2. 4 minus 3. Y equals to 1. Okay. And for x equals to 3. So this is actually the last one. It won't take too long. So y equals to 2, the same thing. And that would be, okay. okay. So we have the table filled in. So I'm just going to like write those um, things here. So that was minus 1, 1, OK. So there we go. Now um, you can see for each x value. So this is the input. That's the output. And I told you the general rule was that input would be always here, the output on this side, and the table on top of the table will always you will always have your function written on top of the table. So the function, I wrote it to the side. I should have written it on the top, but I didn't have space, OK? Uh, so the input was that my x value output is a y value, and that's always the case, OK? Uh, so the x equals to 1, minus 1. So for that input, we got this output, this input, this output, this input, this output. So this, for each input, we had one output. So each of these is a function. So we know that this, this is a function because every input has a single output. But why, so I'm going to say that this is, so um, let, let's actually, let's figure this out. Let's see if this is a function or not. So again, I'm going to be taking a blank paper and rewrite that. OK, so my function would be y squared equals to x. OK. And so I'm just going to draw the table again. So one, two, three. Okay. I am so not good at this. So good at need work. Okay, um, so uh, for x equals to 1, so I'm just going to rewrite the y square equals to x. Okay, so y square equals to 1. To remove the square, when I square root on both the sides, square root gets cut, y equals to square root 1. Right? And so y equals to plus 1 or y equals to minus 1. Okay, so let's move on. So for 1, s equals, x equals to 2, uh, y squared equals to x. Um, okay, so y squared equals to 2. And then square root, cancel that, y equals to square root 2. And then y equals to, so y equals to plus 1.4 or minus 1.4. And then let's solve for 3, x equals to 3. And y square equals to x. It's the last one, okay? Uh, y square equals to three. Uh, 
uh, square root root sides y equals to square root of three y then equals to either plus um, a 1.7 and minus 1.7, okay? So now we have to determine if this is a function or not, right? So you can see uh, if I fill in the table, so I have to make two sections, actually, for each. So for x equals to 1, we had two outputs, so that was plus 1, negative 1. For 2, we had also two outputs, that was plus 1.4, okay, minus 1.4, I'm so sorry, my table is not so neat. Uh, for the input 3, I had positive 1.7, negative 0.7. So, you can see that uh, for the x equals to 1, plus 1, minus 1, 2, plus 0, minus 1, minus 0, plus 1.7, minus 1.7, okay? You can see for each input, I had two outputs. So imagine that you went to a shop and there's a sale, okay? It says 70% off, okay? Uh, and then, so, and then let's say that it was a function that was not working too well, okay? So for each input, you were getting two outputs, though that's not possible. So you ask if you, you put uh, in that 70% off function, you put the quantity of like $2, no, uh, $10, okay? And the shopkeeper tells you that it's either $5, your pay is either $5 or $6. And you're obviously confused because I mean, for one input you're getting two outputs. So this is not a function because we put in one into our function and we got the output plus one and minus one. We put in two, we got plus 1.4 minus 1.4, we put in three, we got a positive 1.7 and a negative 1.7. So this is not a function. is definitely not a function. So I just did this so that you had a insight to what really a function is, okay? So over here, what I just proved is actually the same thing this diagram is saying. So two elements from the domain, which can be the, which can be the x value, Okay, and the range of the y value. And this could be, it's obviously the input, this is the output. Okay, uh, so the input, so two, two elements from the input can give us the same output, that's totally fine, okay? But one input cannot give us two outputs, like, if two things in a shop, if like I had, uh, if I had like a pair of shoes, so two pair of shoes, or for example, one was $70, the other was $60, and they put on a sale and they both reduced to $30, it would still be fine. So be fine with me, still be logical, okay? But if w one thing, one input gives out two outputs. In the example I just told you before when I was working that out, um, that other question. So that would actually not be logical. So function is all about logic. So again, with the line test, so coming back to the straight line test, the graph line test, you can see that's exactly what I was trying to prove. So this was, if this was my line, okay, so I'm doing the line test. You can see if I come like about here for one, so this is my X, 
axis, this is the y axis, right? So for the one x value, I'm getting y value, one y value. For this x value, I'm also getting one y value. It does not matter that two different x values are giving me the same y value, see? So this is one x value, right? And they're both giving me the same y values. That does not matter because that's actually fitting into this rule, okay? But this one, again, the vertical line test, okay? So over here, it's not really touching the line, so that's okay. Over here, it's touching the line at exactly one spot, which is also okay, okay? And when it moves forward, it's touching the line at two spots. So for the same x value, let's say this is one, so for the same x value, I'm getting two different y values. That doesn't work in functions. So this is a function, and this is not a function, okay? So now, coming back to what I started with, a function is something that takes an input, gives us an output, right? And uh, I said the common example function is this. So how we read this is f of x or f mapped onto x, okay? So this is how we read it. This is actually, so I know this looks kind of scary. Okay, so honestly speaking, I did not understand functions the first time my teacher introduced it to me. So that's why I went ahead uh, and that's why I'm making a video on it. Okay, so this is a really scary version. I mean, this really scared me. So this is actually a short form of function. And the x, so the f meant function. x is the input. y is the output. OK? So you don't need to get scared. It's just a short form, okay? And this is basically the math uh, notation. This is a math rule, law, you could say. This is what we believe in, okay? Uh, so the function uh, is short formed into f. Input is given the standard math variable x. Output is given y. But the biggest limitation of functions is so far they're really easy and they're really fun and logical. But the, another limitation is that people usually misinterpret it. And how, uh, that's, that's because, um, see, if you would normally read this, like if I had uh, something like 2x equals to y, you would know that 2 is getting multiplied by, so wait, 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 sorry, I'm so sorry. So if I had 2x equals to y, you would know that the bracket would mean multiplication, right? So you would be 2 multiplied by x equals to y. That's, that's what you would instantly think of. But in the function, Remember, this f is not a variable, and it's not getting multiplied to x, and it's not giving us a product of y. This is definitely a wrong concept. The right way is that this is the name of the function, this is the input, okay? And from, the, from uh, all the processing by the function, this is our answer, which is the y, it's the output range, this is the domain function, okay? So the most common way of writing it is f of x equals y. Others could be g of x equals y, h of a equals b, f of a equals b, f n of t equals d. It could literally be anything you want. But then, 
So once we have like actually familiarized with this, when we know that fx is equals to y, then why would we replace this y with f of x? Like, why do you want to make this look so scary? Okay, so the basic rule actually, the basic rule of math that we follow here is that when we put an equal to sign between two, um, two components in math, uh, we are saying that they're equal to each other. So y is equal to fx and fx is equal to y. That means they can be used interchangeably. It can switch places. So this is a function. This is also a function and both are basically the same thing. So the basic notation we're using is f of x equals y and we can use either. But then comes the really important question of why we can't use the y in instead. Okay, so why can't we use y instead? So for this, I'm gonna say something you would never expect me to say, but functions make life a lot more easier. And you'd be like, how? So first of all, this is not an equation. F is a function, X is the input. This much is clear. But this makes my life math teachers. Because I can always say, let F of X equals 3x plus 2, and then I can ask, what is f of 4? So I'm just going to write f of 4 equals, so what is f of 4, right? So this, this is a question that I want to solve with you. So I'm just going to bring this down, okay, substitute the same thing. So 3x plus 2. Because we replaced this x with a 4, I want to replace everything else, every other x in the equation with a 40. So f of 4 equals to 3 is 2. 3 multiplied by 4 is 12 plus 2 be 14. So f of 4 equals 14. You can see it would be, a, if I had just used like y equals to 3x plus 2, it would have been difficult because I wouldn't know how to put in the x value, exchange it, and I mean, that there will be many complications. So this is the end of my video for functions. This is the first video, and inshallah, I'm going to make more. Uh, my second video would also be on functions, uh, and I'm going to be doing worked examples. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a like. Subscribe to my channel. Um, it's my mom's channel. Uh, so I want you guys to really subscribe because that really help, motivates us. And so thank you so much for watching. Bye.